The Carolina Journal has this 16-year-old student at a uh, 16-year-old student at Central Davidson High School in Lexington, North Carolina, was suspended for three days last week after using the term "illegal alien" during a vocabulary assignment in his English class. Liam McGee's son is a teacher who assigned vocabulary words during class last Tuesday, including the word "alien." McGee says that her son made an effort to understand the assignment and responded to his teacher asking, like space aliens or illegal aliens without green cards? That was his question. Uh, he's, just, he's just trying to clarify. And that's a, it's a fair question. You, spe- you know, these days especially, you have to specify. We've got, al- we got a lot of different kinds of aliens on, on the planet right now. Um, and uh, so we need to know which kinds of aliens we're talking about. According to an email describing the incident sent to local officials and shared with Carolina Journal, A young man in class took offense to his question and reportedly threatened to fight him because of it, prompting the teacher to call in the assistant principal. Ultimately, his words were deemed by administrative staff to be offensive and disrespectful to classmates who are Hispanic. Uh, The student, in response to his suspension, said, quote, I didn't make a statement directed towards anyone. I asked a question. I wasn't speaking of Hispanics because everyone from other countries needs green cards, and the term illegal alien is an actual term that I hear on the news and can find in the dictionary. Um, yes, very, very intelligent point from uh, the young man that, uh, that, that, you know, not only is this a, is this a legitimate term, but this, it could apply to it. Like why you're the one assuming anyone who takes offense to it says, well, that's, that's, that applies to Hispanics. Well, then apparently you, you think that only a Hispanic person can be an illegal alien. That's not the case. Anyone from any country that's not America could be an illegal alien. Um, Meanwhile, State Senator Steve Jarvis said that he contacted the school's district superintendent to make him aware of the situation. Jarvis told the Carolina Journal that while he informed top officials of the issue and urged officials to look for the best outcome, he did not take a stance on what they should do because he wasn't there to understand all sides of the story. Very, very, very courageous position from Steve Jarvis. So this is a, cla- this is a classic Republican move right there. Um, and you find it from... Republicans at the national level, but also the state level as well. So, yeah, I mean, he's he's getting involved. Okay, that, that part is good. He's talking to the superintendent about it. That part is good. But all he says to the superintendent is, well, let's seek the best outcome. What is the best outcome? I have no opinion. I don't, I, I can't, I can't say for sure. Just, just want to, then what, why are you even saying anything? Like, why get involved if you're not going to take a position on it? And what other sides to the story do you need to hear? I don't think anyone disputes the basic facts of the case here. The kid used the term illegal alien, and they suspended him for that term. That's, I don't think anyone disputes that. And not only that, but someone threatened, another kid threatened physical violence against this student for using a term. And, and yet, the student who was threatened ends up suspended for it. That's the public school system for you. And, and by the way, again, the term he used, illegal alien, is, as he says, a legal term. It, like, it's used by the federal government right now. You could go to, uh, go to the DOJ's website and search under the term illegal alien, and you'll get a, a bunch of hits because this is a term used by the government right now. The same government that runs the public school system uses itself the term illegal alien and even if it wasn't a legal term, I mean, I, 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 the fact that the federal government still uses that term is like an oversight on their part, probably. So I would expect that they're going to switch it all over eventually to the politically correct, undocumented migrant or whatever. Um, but even if it wasn't a legal term, it, it still wouldn't be cause for suspension, obviously. And so I can only hope that this kid's family is preparing to sue because that's the only way to deal with stuff like this. The only way to deal with it is you have to take it to court. We need to start getting a lot more litigious about these kinds of things. Um, this is discrimination against the child. It's a, it's a totally unjustified punishment that will affect his life potentially in serious ways. And you can't let it stand. You have to take it to court. It's the only way to deal with it. The tax deadline just passed. And if you owe back taxes or still have unfiled returns, They can really weigh on your mind, especially when the IRS has become more determined than ever. Their chief data and analytics officer revealed that the IRS is focused on an enforcement project with an average return on investment of about $6 for every $1 spent. They're targeting individuals and businesses that currently owe back taxes or haven't yet filed their returns. 
Tax Network USA, the nation's leading tax relief firm, knows the tax code and will fight for you. With a record of negotiating over a billion dollars in tax relief for their clients, their team is knowledgeable in handling any type of tax issue. Whether you owe $10,000 or $10 million, they can help. Even if you don't have all your personal or business records from over the years, they can get you filed up to date. Facing the IRS without a professional is not a smart move. Contact Tax Network USA for the best strategic advice to help reduce or even eliminate your tax debt. Call today at 1-800-245-6000 or visit their website at tnusa.com slash Walsh. They'll give you a free private consultation on how you can settle your tax debt today. That's tnusa.com slash Walsh. And then in the meantime, I know this part I don't even need to say because, uh, because you've heard my spiel many, many times, but uh, in the meantime, for everybody else, this is a, another very good reason, among so many other reasons, to get your child out of the public school system. Uh, kids in public school are totally at the mercy of a system that is hostile, not just to conservative values, and that's an important point to establish, That. Because this is another case, and anytime we, we, we hear stories of this kind of insanity in the public school system, usually you'll hear from conservatives that this is, well, it's discrimination, it's ideological, political discrimination, this is ideological indoctrination, it's all, and yet it is all of that. You know, it's, a, it's a war on conservative values, and sure, that's happening, but more importantly, the public school system is hostile not just to conservative values, but to the truth and to common sense. And when your child is in this system, your child is completely vulnerable to it. Totally subject to this system that that punishes your kid for exercising common sense and for saying things that are true. It's just, it's not fair to put your kid in that situation. I couldn't do that with my own kids. I couldn't put them in a situation where they will be aggressively punished just for being normal and having common sense and saying things that are true. Now, sure, when you get out into the, uh, the, the, the wild world out there as an adult, uh, you're going to encounter many situations where you'll be punished for speaking the truth. And we want to prepare our kids for that. We want to equip them to deal with that. Well, the public school system is not the way to equip them to do it. Because it, 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 here's the thing, you have, to, you have to equip them first, and then you send them out into situations where, they'll be, where, where they will be punished for speaking the truth. But the child is not equipped yet as a child. And especially to, because uh, in the adult world, you might run into situations like this at your job, at, you know, in di- various different contexts. But as an adult, you have you still, even at your job, you have more control over it. Your, your kid is, is in that environment every single day uh, for 13 years, you know, six or seven hours a day, five days a week, nine months a year for, for 12 or 13 years with really no power, no rights, nothing. And expecting them to withstand that, I think, is just expecting far too much. Thanks for checking out this video. If you'd like to listen to my full podcast on the go, you can check out The Matt Walsh Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts.